Everybody knows everybody down here. It's one of the only places in LA I've ever lived, and I've lived all over LA, that is a village. We all know each other. Every artist that's down here knows each other. We've all worked with each other, we've all played with each other, we've all drank with each other. We all know each other, and everyone is very supportive. And I've been doing life drawing since I was 12. I got accepted into the Bretman School of Art in eighth grade. So I've been doing this my whole life. My mom has a painting I did when I was three years old. So I knew I wanted to be an artist, but I didn't know what a fine artist was. Kronk uh, came to my school in my freshman year, and, it was, and he talked about art. And he talked about downtown LA. This beautiful place for artists. This amazing place, cheap rent. You can afford to be there. This is my freshman year at college. And he says, art school is great, but art school will also cripple you. The most important thing about art school is the people you meet and learn the technical aspect of being an artist, but then ignore everything else. So when we moved down here, I had a great time and everything was going well. And then in 94, Jim Fittipaldi started something called Bedlam, which was an anti-gallery. Meaning it was everything the galleries in Beverly Hills wasn't. It didn't intimidate the people who came. What the developers at the time did was no one wanted to come to downtown. The only people down here were the artists who were willing to spend any kind of money. And back then we're talking about 35 cents to a dollar a square foot. But they embraced us. So then the galleries moved slowly to Los Feliz, but people still wouldn't come to downtown. So what Jim started, Jim Fittipaldi with Bedlam started doing was, when he had his galleries, he did a speakeasy and you had to wear suits. So I bought a tuxedo for $25 and everyone would come dressed up and he would have art shows and no one else was doing this down here. So then what happened was Burt Green opened up his gallery in the historic court, his, his, the hysterical court. And uh, Tom Gilmore had some properties on Main Street and he went to different artists and he said, look, I've got these buildings. I, for a dollar a month, you can have a gallery. And we created the art walk. And then Pete's was the quintessential artist bar. That was probably what brought us all together. And when Tom Gilmore did it, he did it for the artists. But then all the lawyers were going there, all the DEAs were going there. I mean, Michael Connolly, who wrote the Bosch books, used to hang out there and he still brings it up. La Cita. but the patio. Yeah, well you have down and out. You know, they're, they're, um, I have to say, even now, uh, Clayton's Royal House, he is another one. There are a lot of bars down here that cater to the artists. Is we can still live here. These guys still back us, and these women still back us. The people here still back us. They still know that artists are an important part of the community. You have to support us. If you support us, we're there. And what we do as artists is we bring people from other places here. We create a dialogue that even if we don't speak the same language, art is a universal language.